story. Our mission really is to unpack how 20th century physicists, Planck, Einstein, those quantum pioneers just completely dismantled the, well, the elegant, predictable 19th century view of the universe. The old clockwork universe idea. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And replaced it with something, well, frankly, weird, probabilistic, uncertain. To really get the shock of it, you have to see where things stood before. You know, the intellectual starting line, the whole scientific world was built on Isaac Newton's laws. That perfect clockwork mechanism. Pretty much. But even Newton had this um, this awkward bit, gravity. Yeah. He had to describe it as action at a distance. Right, this instantaneous force somehow reaching across space. He couldn't say how, just that it worked. Exactly. And that idea, that instant action, it didn't sit right. Eventually, the concept of fields sort of fixed that. Sales, like magnetic fields. Yes, and electric fields. James Clerk Maxwell, back in 1864, she pulled it all together with electromagnetism, showed these fields spread out, you know, propagate, at the speed of light. Which put a speed limit on the universe. It did. Definitely no instant action. So classical physics, governed by these fields, looked deterministic, beautiful. Complete, really. Looked complete, except uh, it wasn't quite, was it? There were a couple of, well, initially minor problems that just blew up. Yeah, two little cracks in the foundation. One was about how hot things glowed, emitted light. The other was about this thing called the ether that light was supposed to travel through, but nobody could find it. Let's start with that first crack then, the uh, the birth of the quantum. Okay. Max Planck, late 1800s. His problem was driven by experiments looking at black body radiation. The light spectrum you get from hot objects. Right. And the classical theory, the Rayleigh Genes Law, it sounded great on paper, but it was just totally wrong compared to the real world data. What did it predict, that classical idea, if you followed it logically? It predicted something they called the ultraviolet catastrophe. Basically, infinite energy. Infinite. How? The math said that as you looked at higher and higher frequencies of light towards the ultraviolet end, the energy radiated should just shoot up to infinity. An infinite amount of energy from a normal, finite object. Which is just absurd. Physically impossible. Completely. The theory kind of worked okay for low frequencies like infrared, but failed catastrophically for the higher ones. So Planck steps in. What did he do? This was around 1900. 1900, yeah. He did something really bold, almost desperate. To make the math fit the experiments, he introduced this, well, this peculiar assumption. Which was? That atoms couldn't just absorb or emit energy continuously in any amount. They could only do it in these discrete little bundles, packets. He called them quanta. And I always find this bit fascinating. He didn't actually believe in it, did he? He thought it was just a mathematical trick. Absolutely. He was uh, deeply uncomfortable with it. Quantization, these indivisible energy units, it messed with the smooth, continuous, classical world he knew. He called it an act of despair. Hoping it would just go away. Yeah, he hoped his new constant, H. Planck's constant, would eventually be proven to be zero, which would mean, you know, no quantization after all, back to the old ways. But it didn't turn out to be zero. The math needed it. It stuck. It stuck. Firmly entrenched. So what does that constant H fundamentally mean for how the universe works? It means energy and action aren't infinitely divisible. There's a minimum packet size. Yeah. H defines the granularity, the ultimate resolution of reality, you could say. And it shows up everywhere in quantum mechanics. Everywhere. The Schrodinger equation, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Yeah. It's a fundamental constant of the quantum world. It told us the universe at its tiniest scale isn't smooth, it's lumpy. 